I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Montague County Commission for August the 30th, 2017. Please reflect for the record that all commissioners are present. If you would, please rise for a moment of silent meditation and the pledge to the flag. <coughs> Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, Renetta. Let's begin with the consent and approval, please. Good morning. We have 47 exonerations for 21,651.34. General County vouchers, 18,904.99. Cole Severance, 197.24. 911, 434.85. Chestnut Ridge Park, 594.03. Camp Muffley, 24,349.06. Mason Dixon Park, 1192.54. Sessor's Valuation, 114.06. Purchasing card vouchers, General County, 27,903.05. Magistrate Court, 5110. 911, 2534.95. Home confinement, 7292.85. Camp Muffley, 1,817.91. Mason Dixon Park, 65.98. And law enforcement forfeiture. 7317 for a voucher total of 85,525.78. We have um, no budget revisions to approve today. Position vacancies for boards and authorities, the Board of Zoning Appeals for the Western Planning District, Planning Commission, Mon County Historic Landmarks Commission, Deckers Creek PSD, and the Mon County Building Commission. Judiciary orders for August the 30th, 2017. Statement of services from George Armistead and Lynn Crane. Move for approval. Second. Been properly moved and seconded for approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Introduction of new employees. Uh, Mr. Smith. I have the first. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Bobby, you may go first. I appreciate that. I'll never get to do it very often. Okay. <clears throat> That's right. You have a remarkably lack of turnover, and this is an addition instead of a turnover, so that's even yeah. better. Yeah. yeah, I brought Chris uh, so he could be here for uh, so he could see what we do. But um, we're here to uh, introduce a new employee, Steve uh, Molinex Jr. I guess you want me to say Jr. He's going to be at our uh, motor pool, and Steve is from Morgantown, and we was able to. Uh, Acquire him from a local dealership. So uh, he is uh, a good mechanic, and uh, we're just putting him on uh, for to learn what goes on here because we've got one that's going to retire next year or two years in, in 2018. So we wanted to uh, get somebody in there, learn the ropes, and uh, see what's going on. He will be a full time employee, 40 hours a week, and entitled to full benefits. And, uh, with your approval, he would like to start uh, September 1st, which will be Friday, so that way is the first start of the pay period, and we'll be on a six-month probation. Okay. Move for approval. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded for approval of appointment. All in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome. Thank Glad you. to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have a new part-time employee for process transport. Thank you. Officially started on the 28th of August. Eric Wilson. Thank you. He will be part-time, not eligible for benefits, and we're glad to have him here. Move for approval. Second. Been properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have Thank another? You. I see you gave us two. Or is that just transfer? Dennis Van Kirk. Oh, he just he went from part time to full time. Okay. So we, uh, that's just a, okay. That's just a change. In, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Smith. Jimmy. <laughs> He's not here. I don't know. Okay. I didn't see Jimmy, that's why. That's okay, Mark. Okay. Uh, I still don't see <laughs> Please, yeah. I grabbed the wrong stuff to bring down. But I wanted to, uh, right. I'll get that down to you. Uh, Mr. Tenney, Patrick Tenney, as you're aware, uh, Chuck Penn, my uh, chief deputy, has moved on into the business world. 
to take care of a business he started a while back. So Patrick is the new Chuck that we would like to get approved as the appointee as our chief deputy of the assessor's office. Uh, his salary will be at 40000 on that. He'll have his three-month probationary period. And uh, Patrick's been with us for about a week, uh, learning some of that stuff and working with Chuck on some of the training part. So I wanted to bring him to you today for approval. Thank you. Move for approval. Second. Then properly moved and second for approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And welcome. Welcome. Sir. Welcome. Good to have you. Are there any other introductions of new employees? <laughs> okay. This is great. We will now open for comments from the public. If the public has a comment to make, um, please come forward, identify yourself. You'll have three minutes uh, to state your case. Thank you. John Sonnenday, Executive Director of the Coordinating Council on Homelessness for two more days. <laughs> and I'm here to say a word of thanks and a few words about some important transitions. The first is to thank you for your role that you and your predecessors in the creation of the <clears throat> Task Force on Homelessness way back in 2010, along with the City Council, which led to the creation of a report on how to reduce homelessness in our community. Despite the fact that we have outstanding public services uh, for those who are in need of help, the number of persons experiencing homelessness just kept going up. And so with your leadership and the city councils, we produced a report that identified what are the proven ways to actually help reduce homelessness, with the result that uh, we have seen those numbers go down significantly. They've dropped uh, at least in half. But even more important is the fact that we now know how to do it. What are the ways to actually reduce homelessness? And we have the agencies practicing that and working collaboratively together. And therefore, the board of the Coordinated Council on Homelessness felt that it was probably uh, poor financial stewardship to continue to raise funds uh, to support an agency to promote collaboration when the collaboration was moving along pretty well. Uh, However, the primary cause of homelessness still exists, and that is the lack of affordable housing. So it was decided to put our emphasis not on the symptom, but upon the cause. And therefore, uh, to uh, move our <clears throat> assets into a cooperative new venture with a group called the Community Housing Action Partnership, um, and to turn our efforts, that's over to them, and to merge into them at the end of this month. Uh, Community Housing Action Partnership, or CHAP, uh, was founded in 2014 for the purpose of catalyzing the development of affordable housing. One of the things that we learned in the task force and then in the Coordinating Council on Homelessness was that any complex social issue, such as homelessness or affordable housing, uh, cannot be solved by any single entity, whether it be governmental or business or community or nonprofit. But solutions to complex social problems require a cooperative, collaborative effort of many working together. You devote a few resources to a collaborative agency, and you wind up being more efficient and actually saving money in the long run and producing better results. This learning clearly applies to the area of affordable housing. Uh, numerous studies have documented what many of us experience on a regular basis is the lack of affordable housing, particularly at the very low end of the scale and at the workforce level. Uh, random efforts at, at addressing this have had little, if any, impact. Uh, the only viable approach is a coordinated one. Uh, CHAP has members representing development, finance, business, uh, government, nonprofits, faith groups, the university, they are the ideal unit to make a serious effort to address this critical need. And I hope that they will receive the kind of support that you and your predecessors and staff have lent to the Coordinating Council on Homelessness. The Coordinating Council will cease operations at the end of this month, and I will be retiring. And the CHAP will, will be uh, electing a new executive director to lead them in their mission of creating affordable housing. 
There are three efforts that continue that won't necessarily fall over to CHAP, things that we have been involved in. One, two of them are things mandated by HUD. That is, if a community receives HUD funding, it must have a cold shelter during the bad weather, and it must have an annual point in time count. Our agencies have assumed the leadership of that, relieving the city and the county from doing so. But if they turn to you for assistance, I hope you'll be prepared to follow through on that responsibility. Finally, we were instrumental in creating the Downtown Task Force to develop uh, more opportunities for all of the people to find fulfillment in the downtown area. We had hoped that upon our um, dissolving that there would be a new entity to which that downtown task force could belong. We have not been successful in providing that. So I hope that you, along with other community leaders, will see that that group can continue. It shows great promise for improving the quality of life for everyone in the downtown. I said thank you on behalf of the organization. Now let me add just one final word, and that is a personal thanks. I've had the privilege of working with you and with your predecessors, the current staff and previous staff, and I've been most grateful for the support, the encouragement, the participation that you have put forward in our initiatives. Uh, that kind of encouragement and support match with from that from others across this community has made this one of the most meaningful and rewarding works of my entire career. And I have been very grateful for the opportunity to do that. And I thank you for that opportunity to work on behalf of the community and also on behalf of our most vulnerable citizens. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you. John, on your service. We really appreciate it. Uh, is there anyone else that uh, public comment is still open? Hearing none, we will close the portion of public comment and move on to Colleen. Do you have any grants? I do. Um, the first one I have for you is the Edward Byrne Justice Assistance Grant. We re we're receiving $13,912, which are going to be used for radios for the cruisers, four radios for the cruisers, which is also including installation. Um, and they're also going to be purchasing some first aid kits that contain tourniquets and stuff like that. Um, I have the disclosure of lobbying activities that need signed. I have um, the certifications and asser assertions, I can't even say the word now, that needs to be signed, and um, certification of compliance that also needs to sign for that grant. And then I also have the cultural facilities grant. Um, we're requesting $50,000 from them to, for the Mason Dixon Park. Um, I have the certification statement that needs signed, the project information and compliance, the certification of historic preservation and a statement of compliance for the Americans with Disabilities Act. Move for approval of second. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded for approval. Signature. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, next, we will go to uh, Jackie Harriman, uh, the Regional Development Coordinator of Northern West Virginia. Make a wish for a report, please. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful to see you guys again. Good morning. Good morning. I have a little handout for you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning, gentlemen, and thank you again for having me. I really appreciate it. At the Make a Wish Foundation, we grant wishes for children between the ages of two and a half and 18 who are diagnosed with a life-threatening medical condition. Some of the conditions are progressive, degenerative, malignant that have placed children's lives in jeopardy. But the most common misconception about the Make-A-Wish Foundation is that we grant wishes to terminal kids or who are dying. But this is absolutely untrue. We actually grant wishes to kids who are diagnosed with 
a life-threatening medical condition. And nearly 80% of our WISH kids are actually still living today and have gone on to live healthy and normal lives. Some of the typical wishes are you could travel to go anywhere, just like Miss Larkin, who you met last time. She wished to go to Hawaii. You could also wish to have anything. We just granted a wonderful gazebo wish. You could wish to meet any celebrity in the world. You could also wish to be anything, just like the very first wish for a little boy to be a police officer, Chris Gracious. <clears throat> The average cost of a wish is about $4,400, and we need our community's help. In order to continue to do what we do, we are here to ask everyone's support to help make even more wishes come true here in Northern West Virginia. Currently, we're working on between 50 and 60 wishes, and last year we actually granted 66 wishes in the northern part of West Virginia. <clears throat> wishes have a lasting, life-changing impact on our wish kids and their families. More than just a nice experience, wishes have the power to transform the lives of wish kids by helping them build physical and emotional strength to continue fighting their fight. When a wish is granted, a child replaces fear with confidence, sadness with joy, and anxiety with hope. So on that note, we would like to invite the commission to actually form a team, which is free of charge, to come and join our Walk for Wishes event on Saturday, September 30th. And we would love for you guys, if someone would like to step up and be the team captain, we would love to have that be open up to the public to join your cause and help support us to help make more wishes come true. And if you'd like, you can do so at walkforwisheswv.com, which is great. And at that, do you guys have any questions for me or anything I can answer? At what time is this? The registration will open at 9, and then the 5K will start at 10. And then following, we have a family fest afterwards that will last till about 1 o'clock. Okay. Yeah. And for anyone who's interested, it is free of charge to form a team. And then you just raise however much money that you would like to do. And lastly, if anyone thinks that they might know of a child that has a life-threatening medical condition, they can call our office to actually refer them. It's 304-292-5600. All right, well, that's it for me. Thank you, thank gentlemen. You. Thank, you I appreciate it. thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. We, we invited you back because we wanted the community to be aware of the efforts that the Make-A-Wish Foundation uh, does in, you know, and the fact that this is local, okay? Right. So that's right. a, I think that's another key element that people mm -hmm. should understand, okay? And 100% of the money will stay in the last Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll move to correspondence. Renetta, I see we have a letter from Mark Morton, who is general counsel for the state tax department. Uh, if you would, I would prefer you go ahead and read that correspondence. Mm -hmm. Dear President Hawkins and Commissioners Bloom and Sikora, this letter is in response to your West Virginia Freedom of Information Act request dating July 27, 2017, received by the West Virginia, West Virginia Tax Department on August 15, 2017. The request read in pertinent part as follows. Under the West Virginia Freedom of Information Act, the Montague County Commission hereby requests a list of businesses that are required to pay wine and liquor tax based on sales. Please include the business name and address that identifies their physical location as well as the total remitted for each quarter for a period of five years. After reviewing applicable state law regarding the disclosure of taxpayer information, the information you have requested in your uh, FOIA request is being denied based on the exemption set forth in West Virginia Code 29B-1-4. A5. Information specifically exempted from disclosure by statute is exempted from disclosure under the West Virginia Freedom of Information Act. Under Section 11-10-5D of the West Virginia Code, except for certain narrow statutory exclusions, the West Virginia Tax Department is forbidden by law from disclosing any tax-related information in any way connected with the personal or business affairs of a taxpayer, including tax returns, tax documents, or tax information relating to state tax liabilities, document filings of a particular taxpayer, audits or audit information, background file documents, and tax compromise information. Uh, refers to a West Virginia code and uh, case number. Hmm. The information you have requested is subject to West Virginia Code 11-10-5D confidentiality restrictions and is therefore exempt from Freedom of Information Act disclosure. 
This concludes the Tax Department's initial response to your Freedom of Information Act request dated July 27th and received by the Tax Department on August 15th. You are advised that the Freedom of Information Act forward you the opportunity to seek injunctive or declaratory relief in the Circuit Court of Kanawha County. Sincerely, Mark Morton, General Counsel. Thank you. Mm -hmm. May we discuss? I, I think we should. I mean, okay. uh, obviously, we've, uh, we've run into another uh, course or avenue that appears that we will have to uh, take into consideration. I, is our prosecuting attorney here? Yes, yes I, I don't want to put, I'm not going to put her on the spot. I, I, yes. but, <laughs> but since she is here, um, and we did talk, her, her and I did discuss yes. it yesterday. Would, oh, okay, good. So, would, would oh, there great. be some advice that you would offer yeah. to us? Come on down. Please. <laughs> I'm sorry, you were, you, were, you, were, you, were, you were semi behind the post. I'm pretty sure <laughs> I saw you came way. in, but yes. <laughs> um, thank you. I think that the, when I talked to Renetta yesterday, I was actually yeah. inquiring if you all had heard a response from the June 5th letter where you had written and asked for a determination that you were a, a had a material interest in that information right. and you didn't get a response from that, which I did not know. What I th and what seems to have occurred in that is that letter asking for that particular designation went to a different location than Mr. Stagger. And so I don't know if he is aware of that request, but also as I read the June 5th letter, it asks for that designation, but doesn't ask for any action as a result of that designation. Mm -hmm. So that letter asks to be designated as having a material interest, but doesn't ask for, um, for them to provide information to you based upon the designation of being a material interested party. And so it might be semantics to them, but it also may be um, the left hand doesn't understand what the right hand is doing and that request may have crossed paths. And so that freedom of information response from them is appropriate um, because that would not be the correct vehicle to get that type of um, private information but the designation as a materially interested party is probably the right avenue to pursue but so we, will we have to figure out to letter. we have to figure out to whom that okay. needs to be provided <coughs> so i don't think all hope is lost rather than proceed in Kanawha county at this I time i think that i think their response the their FOIA response is appropriate okay. and so to proceed then in Kanawha county is right. going to be probably and just a, so you know the reason why we did a FOIA response is because we didn't even hear six months we didn't even get a letter saying you sent it to the wrong department this is you know we didn't get anything and that's why we right. were looking at the next avenue right right, so. right. but as i read that june okay. 5th letter it doesn't we'll request any in. action by them so i think we'll figure it out renetta and i'm okay. talking okay. about that i'm going to draft another letter so all right. well we're going to continue this i, yeah. I want to thank you for your support sure, and sure, i think sure. all three right. of us we just want to get clarification i think and that's that's the bottom line right and that's and right now we can't ask the right questions because we don't have the correct information. Right. I think it's appropriate to okay. request that. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh -huh. Thank you for your help. Uh, any other correspondence? Uh, yes. Um, we had uh, received, actually through um, Chief Kisner, um, a, a gentleman contacted him regarding, uh, from FEMA, regarding setting up a, a meeting uh, on September the 12th from 9 to 11. Um, originally, it, it was going to be at the Sheriff's Department, and that's what they put in the letter, but we've actually decided to locate that here. Okay. It would be easier uh, logistically to, to have it here. Um, so he will be sending out an email to everyone that he's already invited to the, the meeting. Um, it's just uh, to review um, a firm, which is... Uh, let's see, the flood insurance rate map. Um, so they're going to be doing some revisions to that. And so they're just, it's a meeting of public officials and really the public that are, op it's open to the public. So we're just going to have that here. And um, obviously you guys are invited since it's your space. <laughs> Thank you. Any other correspondence? Um, yes, I received uh, from... Um, Pete Zapaka this morning. Um, he is um, kind of heading up the Mason Dixon 250th celebration um, <clears throat> October the 13th through the 15th at Mason Dixon Historical Park. They have all kinds of uh, activities going on, and I s assume that a more firm schedule will be coming at a later date, but um, we welcome everybody to attend. I, that's over the weekend. I, I did get a uh, specific time for a 3 o'clock on the 15th okay. uh, from him. Uh, okay. I think that's the, 
official, official. Official, uh, official. Yes. 250th celebration. <laughs> yes, I, I, okay. I, I guess. So, Sean, do you have anything to add to that since you're No, I did get an appointment from him, and I've accepted, so okay. I will be there. Okay. okay, yes, and I put it on my calendar as well, I think. I think but we do have one more item of yes. correspondence. Um, Commissioner Bloom was actually nominated um, for the uh, Volunteer Service Award for the Governor's Office. Um, he didn't get accepted, but um, he uh, he did. Uh, Justice uh, Governor Justice did send a nice uh, certificate. Um, it says, um, "Be it hereby known that Tom Bloom has been awarded this commendation for volunteer service to the state of West Virginia for outstanding commitment to volunteerism." And exceptional contributions toward making West Virginia a better place. Governor Justice. Thank Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. It is an honor. I'll, I, 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 really. I do, no, I appreciate it. It was very nice to be put up, and I do want to thank the people who did that. It, it is. I think it just represents this community. I represent those who are all volunteering with me. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? No, sir. Okay. Is there any unfinished business? Hearing none, we'll move to new business. Uh, first order is consideration of the application for annexation submitted by the Town of Granville for the areas of Chaplin Road, Route 19 from the Star City Bridge to the Granville Fire Department Event Center and parts of Scotts Run Road to Ladybug Lane. Uh, I will ask first, is there a motion for acceptance of this application? Hearing none, I will ask, is there a motion for denial of application? I move to deny the annexation as proposed. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded for denial of the application. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I want to make perfectly clear that there will be no discussion of this as an order needs to be rendered to the town of Granville so that this will give the commissioners a opportunity to go ahead and meet and render the decision that commission has made, not an individual statement uh, of, of fact by one of the three commissioners. So that is what will be happening next. We will set a meeting, and the three of us then will go ahead and write our findings as to uh, what we have, okay? Thank you. <clears throat> Secondly, report on the overall evaluation of proposals received in response to Montgomery County Fleet Financing and Management Services, RFP, and consideration of entering into negotiations and establish an agreement with the recommended successful offer. Sean? I will respond to this. Um, I put a, a narrative summary in each of your boxes yes. in regards to uh, the overall um, solicitation process. And it was um, it's my first one spearheading it for the county, but of course I have 20, 23 <laughs> years of experience doing this for the federal government. That's why so we put you in charge. <laughs> um, I can say that it was a very... Um, it, it, the, in all that experience, I've never seen a solicitation where things were this close. Um, and to kind of go through the narrative summary that I provided with you, we issued this solicitation on July 7th. Um, we uh, designated a single point of contact, which was Renetta. We, we established an R, uh, RFP Dropbox location where all question, uh, or any questions that were answered and all the documents were provided, so it was a completely free and open uh, back and forth. <clears throat> We provided for a bid uh, pre-bid conference when we invited the vendors in. We did not make it mandatory. Uh, it was uh, uh, it was up to the vendors to pretend uh, to attend or not. But uh, we encouraged that they attend so that uh, there could be a free uh, back and forth of information. Everything that was discussed in that pre-bid conference, all the questions were uploaded to Dropbox and all the previous questions. As a result of that, we did have an amendment where we cleaned up some of the uh, questions that were lingering regarding the uh, RFP. And uh, we revised the deadline for submittal to um, August 8th. As you guys are aware, we opened up the bids on our meeting on August 9th. And, uh, forwarded, and with your approval, we forwarded the technical uh, proposals to the evaluation committee, which was Captain Ralston, Renetta McCure, and uh, Bobby. They, <clears throat> excuse me, they performed their evaluation, and, I, I, you know, this was the first indication this is going to be very close because the technical evaluations came back, and out of a possibility of 300 points, uh, uh, both vendors were within four points, um, one at 273 and one at 269. Um, with uh, your approval, we forwarded 
uh, we asked, I asked for your approval to go ahead and do the cost analysis. Um, we did open at the, the meeting where we opened up, one, where I reported the technical results. We, at that time, we opened up the cost results. And um, again, an indication was everything was very, very close. And there was a lot of moving parts to this. So uh, with your guys' approval, I did a very detailed cost analysis. I also went back through the uh, technical proposals to uh, make sure that there wasn't anything missing. There wasn't any hidden costs that were in the T's and C's that we that weren't considered. Uh, and there was some a lot of back and forth, which was completely uh, documented um, in in the file, uh, to make sure that we were comparing with uh, apples with apples. Uh, in the end, the cost evaluations. Um, came in uh, and we weighed the scores. They came in very, very close with the uh, cost scores being uh, within 0.51% of being the same. So overall, we have a very, um, very close uh, uh, weighted score. The, the combined scores ended up being 99.27 for merchant fleet management services and 98.14 for enterprise fleet management services. So um, again, all this doc is documented in a narrative I, prov I provided to you. Um, I also did my due diligence to uh, review their uh, financial statements and also did a search through the government system to make sure that there wasn't any uh, derogatory information regarding either of these uh, 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 bidders. But with that, it is my recommendation um, that we conclude this RFP um, uh, and enter into a, uh, or with your approval, uh, mm -hmm. approve of me to uh, uh, start negotiations to enter into a contract arrangement with uh, Merchants Fleet Management Services for a base period of 12 months with an additional uh, uh, four additional 12 months periods. A uh, little background information. Again, this is very. Well, I'll second it, so then you can. I had okay. Go ahead. <laughs> second. I, this is very, very close. I can't. I can't impart how close this was. I mean, the average variance of monthly rates was sixteen dollars per vehicle, <laughs> uh, which equates to about three point one three percent. I looked at everything. Overall base prices, which um, you know, um, when I look at the base price. Um, and then the ultimate thing that I looked at is through the life of the contract that taxpayers, when we enter into these agreements, we're going to be very frugal. Uh, but overall, the taxpayer should, would probably expect that we'd be spending in a five-year period about 3.74 less than the invoice price for the vehicles. So um, we're, I'm very comfortable and happy with uh, uh, you know, the possibility of moving forward and entering into an overall uh, fleet management uh, agreement. It's been properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And but thank you for yes. your, because that was an area that I'm really pleased that you were able to do. <laughs> Trust me. <Yeah. laughs> I, 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 I issue the same sentiments. Uh, <laughs> Sean is a man of eminent detail, and it is most appreciated to have that, you know, that consideration on contracts. Thank you. Uh, next, we will have a uh, consideration of an executive session pursuant to West Virginia Code 6-9A-4B9. What, what I was going to ask, do we want to go to the other reports and then do that? I didn't know how you went, since everyone's still here and I didn't know, because it could be a while, our meeting. Would you mind, we just continue just to do the reports of elective and do that? I have no problem. With okay. That. I don't know. Since there may be somebody here who might want. We will proceed then to reports from elected officials. <clears throat> reports from county commissioners. Oh, well, wait, sorry. Yeah. You were behind the post again, all right? Uh, yeah, uh, you order to do yeah. getting <laughs> order taking <laughs> a little longer. <laughs> um, what I wanted to come in today is, as you're aware, in July when I came in, we just have, <clears throat> we just completed being monitored by the state for our mapping. And at that time, we had passed our mapping again from the state with passing all the categories. Recently, for the last three months, the state's been monitoring us on our other side with the real estate. Uh, we met with our monitor on Monday, and uh, the results were very good. We passed every category again on that end. So I wanted to come in to share that with you all from that, because I don't know if they submit anything to you. Uh, but it's our second go around. And the way it works is if you pass, it's every other year. 
if you fail, then they come back the next year and keep coming back until you do pass. So we've been fortunate where we've passed in 15 and now 17 for that, and we've passed 14 and now 17 in mapping. So that's something I wanted to share with you all. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. We'll go to reports from county commissioners. Sean? I'm going to make it short and sweet. Uh, sure. Since we have so much going on, I really don't have anything to report. Okay. <laughs> That's <good>. um, <laughs> uh, one issue I knew that we were going to bring up today, and MJ is here from the Youth Services Center, there was discussion about the van. And what we had discussed, and I want to know if, if it's possible that they had the money to pay for the van um, on the basis that they would then, the option, I guess, I hear what we could do is we could buy it then title it to them, then they would take over the insurance. Is that possible or not? Or what was the final decision? So we can we would move have forward to transfer the title. Transfer the title. Transfer the title, then they would be in charge of having the van. And the, then the key reason being that in two weeks they are under, what is the word? Uh, uh, we have a state's licensing review. Thank you. So since they have to have a state license review, and by the time we get this process, it could actually hinder their licensing. So I would like to move forward to uh, have her buy the van, and then we would title, uh, transfer the title to them, and they would also pick up the insurance. We would have to buy it. They would have to yes. reimburse us. Exactly. Okay. 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 That's so moved. Are you putting that in? Put yes, yeah, so moved. Okay. Um, no, I think you guys could just go ahead and direct Chris to go ahead and get one purchased. Okay. I'm fine with that. We have a second to that? Second. Okay, yeah. thank you. Been properly moved and seconded for that action. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Thank you. And one other, I just <coughs> received attention Vietnam veterans on Thursday, September 7th, and we just wanted to advertise from 2 to 4 at the local PBS station, and we'll announce this that WMPB invites any Vietnam veteran to attend the private screening of a locally produced companion film. And basically called Vietnam, West Virginia's Remembered, will be broadcast. So. We'll have that. We'll have that put up too. But I just received that. I just wanted to and that is it. Okay, uh, I'll be short as well. The uh, Camp Monthly Board did meet uh, this week and did review the submissions for the expression of interest. There were two, so I would like to at least place on the agenda for uh, next week to go ahead and submit. Uh, and, and individuals to actually make a you know a proposal in other words a cost proposal okay. regarding the design of the pool okay okay and uh, with that uh, we will move to go into thing. executive session pursuant 6-9a-4b-9 second it's been properly moved and seconded to go into executive session all in favor aye, aye. we're going to now adjourn to a second session thank you We are out of executive session. We will consider deep to consider for adoption a bond authorizing resolution and order which would authorize the issuance by the county commission of its not more than $85 million aggregate principal amount of special district excise tax revenue refunding and improvement bonds series 2017 University Town Center Economic Opportunity Development District for the purpose of currently refunding and redeeming in full the County Commission's outstanding 2014A Series 2014B and Series 2014C Special District Excise Tax Revenue Bonds paying cost of the design, acquisition, construction, and equipment of additional development expenditures in the University Town Center Economic Opportunity Development District funding a reserve fund for such bonds paying capitalized interest on the bonds and paying cost of issuance of the bonds and related costs. Move for approval. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded for approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next, to consider the adoption of a resolution which would amend the reimbursement resolution adopted by the County Commission on June 3rd, 2015, regarding the ability to reimburse expenditures made prior to the issuance by the County Commission of any tax-exempt bonds for University Town Center Economic Opportunity Development District from the proceeds of such bonds. Move for adoption. Move for approval. Second. <laughs> it's been properly moved and seconded for adoption. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And lastly, consideration of entry of an order by the County Commission which would amend the boundaries of University Town Center Economic <laughs> Opportunity Development District, the district, approve the amended Phase Two project for the district, and approve a revised bonding capacity for the district, all as the same have been approved by the West Virginia Development Office. Move for approval. 
Second. It's been properly moved and second for approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Do you have a motion for adjournment? Yes, to move to adjourn. Second. It's been properly moved and second. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.